Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. I'm a little tired, but other than that, I'm doing well. Um, this sermon is called Simply Sit and Share. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do, what you're doing in me, what you're doing through me, what you're doing through this ministry in our time together. We praise you. We give you all honor and all, all glory. Speak to me. Speak through me. And let your presence, presence prevail in my heart and in my life. Touch every heart. Touch every spirit. Touch every mind. Touch every soul watching me today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi guys. As I said before, um, this sermon is called Sit and Share. I was thinking about this whole aspect of um, Jesus' ministry and how um, what he basically did was um, he sat down with people and shared with them and just shared his heart and shared wisdom with them. All, all of Jesus' ministry, if you look through the Gospels at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see all he basically did was sit down with people and heal. He did heal people. He did uh, go on excursions with the disciples, like um, the, fi the five the five loaves and two fishes and all that. He did do that, but even that was basically um, sitting down with people for a meal. And he told stories a lot uh, to, ex um, to illustrate his point. He was a master storyteller. And I was thinking about how in today's society, how we've lost this sense of community, in my opinion anyway. We, we hide behind screens and we're so busy creating personas that we have lost that sense of community. And we call it social media. Um, but I think it can be isolated media. I think although it has the, um, the ability to make us more social, but what it's really doing um, sometimes is making us antisocial. We're, we're getting to the point where we don't know how to talk to each other, we don't know how to communicate with each other except for texting and um, uh, texting and Instagramming and Facebooking and all of those social media sites. It's great, it really is. But I wish we hadn't have lost that in-person touch. Um, the, the touch where we can meet for coffee and whatever and sit and share. And I think that's why loneliness is is so rampant is because um, it's like this inauthentic connection. We don't have authentic com connections anymore. We have inauthentic illusions of connections. Like you see, you see pictures of people and people's babies and people's children and he was a single wo woman, like, uh, you subconsciously or consciously compare yourself to the person. You may think, well, why isn't my family like that? Or why isn't my life like that? Um, not knowing that that picture is one in a hundred that that person take, took and that baby was upset in keeping that person awake at two o'clock in the morning while you were sleeping. See, I think 
we're I think with the advent of social media uh, we're encouraging uh, people to put on this persona of their lives um, that everything is good everything is well um, everything is um, doing great while we're while we're really dying inside well well we're really so lonely as a society that we think we're going to scream and our our family connections are really um some of our family connections I should say are really struggling and I think we really need to get back to this idea of just sitting down with each other, sitting down and sharing with each other, getting, getting away from our screens and getting away from our social media accounts and actually sitting down and sharing with each other. Um, I was thinking about uh, this uh, ministry that I follow um, not the ministry that I attend but an, another ministry I follow I, I don't follow many other ministries I only follow about three or four other ministries consistently and I was thinking I love Sir I love sermons, I love preaching, I love hooping, I love hollering, I love all of that. But I also really love just when a pastor sits down and shares his heart and or her heart and really just exposes the word of God without all the entertain not Without all the entertainment factor, without all the hooping, hollering, screaming, all, all of that has its place. To rejoice and praise and get happy has its place. But I think uh, sometimes it can become um, like performing, like you're trying to uh, uh, perform for a crowd like if they stand up you're preaching a good word and if they're like sitting down like looking bored you're not so as a pastor you could get into uh, performing instead of performing for people instead of expelling the words the word of truth as an oracle and vehicle of God and I think the Lord really wants ministers to get ministers, pastors, evangelists, preachers, teachers to get back to why God called them and to get back to really being with the people. Sometimes the, in the churches I've seen now, I'm not a leader or um, or of a church or ministry yet um, but what I've seen is depending on how big you, your ministry is um, is is the more far removed you get from the people because the business side of leadership takes over and yes, the business side is very important, but I think sometimes pastors have forgotten to really be, um, to really serve instead of be served, to really um, be there for the people instead of um, just letting your associates do it. I know that and plus you have it the other way too you have a pastor that is so much with the people as they get worn out because they want to do everything themselves um, and the Lord is saying we need um, leaders need to find a ba balance of sitting with the people and and um, 
being able to separate from the people so that they can get a word from God and so that they can um, um, minister what he says to their congregation and I hope and I'm I'm just spouting off at the mouth here but when if I ever get like um, to what I to the place that I see in my head and and where I'm pastoring a lot of people and have a lot of people under me I never want to forget why God put me there I don't I never want to forget why he called me and leadership can easily take you um, the business of leadership can easily take you away from why he called you and and what you're supposed to be doing there and I also I really always want to keep my heart on the pulse of what first of all what God needs from me and and second of all what people need from me see what people need from me as a leader I think we kind of lost um, how to be servants, not only as leaders, but to serve each other. Um, I think we've kind of lost that, and I think um, my whole thing today is just to um, sit down and hear each other, really listen to each other, be present in the moment. Don't just, hi, how you're doing? Hi, how you doing? Fine. Really look into a person's eyes and be present with that person in that moment. Um, because I know for me, plenty of times, someone can be talking to me, but I'm thinking of what's for dinner or I'm thinking of something else um, whereas I'm not really present in that moment and I could miss what is what God is really trying to speak in that moment I remember uh, in the movie um, A Star is Born the la latest version with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. I remember, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, I remember at the end when Bradley Cooper was in the arms of late Lady Gaga, they were married at this point and he was really struggling with her fame and her fortune and how things were changed how things were changing and at the second last scene of the movie um, they were talking and um, he he was really depressed and really forlorn and she couldn't see it because she was only focused on her tour and what she had to do and at the end he ended up killing himself it was ended up being a disaster and I kept I came out of that movie and, and I thought what would have happened if she had just looked into his eyes looked really seen the despair in his eyes really seen um, the cry in his eyes, really seen what her busy life and new career was doing to him. And maybe she would have been able to help him. I said that to say, although that is just a movie, that happens to us all the time. How many times do we walk by our family and friends and 
and co-workers and people in our lives and not really see them we say hi how are you and the person says i'm fine we say that's good see you later um and we don't really see their pain we don't really we don't really notice them i think when we begin to sit down and really share with people really open up with people and really see people and get them to see us i think that's where unity we will begin that's where healing will begin that's where restoration will begin i think until we get authentic with people until we sit down with people and really sit with them and really get to know who they are and look into their eyes instead of down at their phones while we're talking to them we would um build authentic relationships i think the key to authentic relationships um as well um along with trust and love is the ability to really look into a person's eyes and say you're worth something i see you i see you i see who you are i respect who you are i i admire who you are when you get to sit with a person and really understand and hear their story your perspective on life becomes different i think the reason why we're fighting so much and why our uh, why we're doing all this uh fighting back and forth politically religiously uh with with people is because uh we've never sat down with them we've never sit we've never sit and shared with them our story and allowed them to sit and share with us in an authentic way we've always been so quick to defend our position without listening uh to others because when you understand a story, when you understand a person, it opens your worldview up and makes you see things in a way that you wouldn't have seen them before. But I think in order to get to a place, to that place where we can actually sit and share with people, I think we need to get the spirit of selfishness out and i and i was also thinking of the whole aspect of um entertainment in the church although although we say it's all for god and all for him i don't think we really know what that means i think i think um although i love the lights although i love the dancing the singing the, all of that i think in order for real church to begin and real healing to begin and real restoration we need to get back to the to the point where we just um sit with each other where we just listen to each other where we don't try and put, uh, uh, try and defend our positions, where we where we can agree to disagree, because there are parts in the Bible that aren't really clear on certain issues, and we can take this position, or we can take that position, but at the end of the day. If the Bible is not doesn't say anything definitively on it, we don't really know. Or if the Bible seems to be um, speaking uh, 
in two ways on the same issue, we don't really know. Like, for example, now, I don't want any um, comments on this. This is just an example. Um, baptism. Um, in, in one scripture in Acts, it says, baptizing them in the name of Jesus. And in one scripture in Matthew, it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, we can take, one, one group of people can say, let's baptize them in the name of Jesus, because it says in Acts to baptize them in the name of Jesus. And then another person could say, well, it says in Matthew, I think it's Matthew, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Ghost. So we can spend all our time with that and, and we can miss the whole point. And I think the whole point of baptism for me is not so much the literal name, it's more the birth and, and not birth, it's more of the rebirth of a person's soul. So if it says both in the Bible, personally, now this is just my opinion. Um, personally, I think both are okay. So I said all that to say, we spend so much time with these little things that we're missing the big picture. picture. We're missing that souls are dying. We're missing that people need the Lord. We're missing that people are dying for something to hold on to. And that's something they need to hold on to is Jesus. And if we can just sit down with, with each other um, and put our differences aside and focus on the fact that um, we all love Jesus we all are human, we all do this, we all have sins, we all have struggles, we all need grace, we all need the cross. Let us work together, let us sit down and share, share with each other. You share your story with me and I'll share my story with you and we can uh, love each other in Christ, although we disagree. Because it's all right to disagree as long as you're not being disagreeable. This a, a certain level of disagreement is healthy. It keeps things interesting. God made us all differently with different opinions and different levels of thought. And as long as we, we're, all, we're all in the kingdom together, there's nothing wrong with disagreement. But it's when that disagreement gets in the way of a person's humanity where we think a, uh, a certain denomination is less human because they don't do that or they don't do this or whatever. At the end of the day, only God can judge who... who, who who can go to heaven or hell, we can't judge it because we don't have a heaven or hell to put anyone in. And we, we need the grace of God. We need, um, we need the forgiveness of God just as much as anyone there. And I think if we begin to sit down with each other and put our, um, denominational differences aside and realize that we are one in Christ, it will just open up a new level of thought for us and, and we will gain experiences that we couldn't imagine if we let people who are different than us into our lives and into our circumstance. And I think 
um, we would learn to celebrate our differences instead of letting our differences divide us. And I think when we let our differences divide us, where we can, when we can see it, when we can see our differences and celebrate them, we will be so much better off. I think the reason why a lot of people don't come to church is because, not because they don't know Jesus, not because they don't want to know God, it's because they see a lot of div divisiveness inside the church. And they said, if people are going to fight inside the church and people are fighting outside the church, why do I need to be become a Christian? We need to work on ourselves internally first. And we need to ask God to unite us and and we really need to just love each other. And as I said before, love is not weak. My definition of love is like, we embrace you despite whether or not we agree. Um, my definition of love is our uh, a human's ability to embrace another human despite whether they what whether they agree um, with all that human do, does I didn't say that right but you get what I mean it's it's embracing everything about that person despite whether we agree or not because there are there are some things in our lives, in all of our lives, that God would totally disagree with, but he still loves us and he still died for us. He, he knows who will come to him and who won't, and he still died in lo and loves us just the same, and he wants us to do it for other people. Um, we really need to get back um, to sitting down with people and loving people just where they are at. Because when you love somebody buddy just where they're at, they will want to come up higher because they'll say, Hey, that person is so kind and caring and ge generous to me. What do they have that I that I don't? And there is a song um, of oh about fifteen years ago by the band for him. It was called "The Basics of Life." And as we close today, I will sing a part of that song. Um, Uh, it talks about getting back to um, uh, the basis where Christ is everything in our lives and how we need to get back to a strong foundation in Christ. It's beautiful. So guys, thank you so much and let me pray for you as we go. Father, I thank you for what you're what you're doing today and what you're about to do. I thank you for the hearts and hands that you've touched. Lord Jesus, cause us to sit and share with someone different than us this week, oh God. Cause us to be the hands and feet of you this week. And Lord God, touch our spirits, touch our hearts, touch our homes touch our marriages, touch our singleness, God. Wherever we are at, Lord Jesus, let your spirit abide with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Here is the basics of life by For Him. You turn the page for a new day has dawned 
Bye, everybody. See you next week.